Hello, it's currently a very beautiful 56 degree morning here in Wichita, Kansas. So that means I have great weather to get started to do whatever I want today. So my goal is to take this off of the block, it's still bolted down with the OEM head bolts. So I gotta take those off, take the head off of the block. And then what I need to do is lap the valves, put in the stem seals. And if I have enough time, I'll assemble the head today. If not, I'll do it tomorrow. Anyways, let's get started. All right, now they're all loose, so I'm going to zap them out real quick. Okay, so I got all my uh, head studs out. I only put 13 of them in there because the VVTi cam cap was in the way. There's 14 that hold them on though. But anyways, those are out. The washers are right there. I'm getting ready to lap the valves. So I got my box of valves over there and then I've got a lapping tool. What this does is it sticks to the valve itself. This little suction cup will stick to the flat surface of the valve. You rotate it in your hands like that and it'll grind down the surface between the valve itself and the valve seat on the cylinder head. To do that, I've got two compounds here. Normally you, you would use a like a lapping compound, but it's not gonna make too much of a difference what I use as long as the surface gets polished correctly. So I'm gonna be using 3M machine polish to start off. It should be a little bit more abrasive than this. So I'll start with something that's slightly rougher and then I'll get to a model, metal polish and seal it. So this will shine the surface up really well and help seal in that polish. That way when the valves go to seal, it's the same surface every time. And then as soon as I'm done, doing all the lapping of both of these. I got to clean all of this out of there and off the valves. It's quite windy today, so I hope you'll be able to hear me at least a little bit. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the valve. I'm going to insert it down in there, making sure that I'm putting them in the right spot. So I've got the head marked 12 right there, and then way down there at the other end, it's marked one. How it's going to work is I'm going to stick this on there, and I'll just rotate this back and forth. But to start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the 3M compound, I'm going to put it here, and then on this surface here all the way around, and I'll spin this until I don't hear any more grinding noises. So a pretty common issue when doing this is that you'll get some of the compound top of the valve and then on the bottom of your lapping tool. Every now and then you just gotta clean that off. That way you can create a better seal for the lapping tool and carry on with what you were doing. I ground until I no longer felt a coarseness underneath. You'll be able to feel it in your hands as you're spinning it under the lapping tool. It'll feel kind of rough. And then once it smooths out, you won't be able to feel it anymore. But you can see all the way around, there's this part here where there's still some lines from it being dirty from carbon buildup and maybe corrosion. At the tip of my thumb right now to right here, you can see that it's smooth right there all the way around. So that's what I've just done. So I've polished all of that. So that's where the actual seal is occurring. Now now that I know that the coarser compound has made it so that we'll see, I'm going to go ahead and get the polishing compound, put some of that on both surfaces again, do the same process, and then once it's perfectly smooth, I know that this one's done. I just want to give you guys a reminder that when you are doing this, wear clothes, you do not mind getting ruined because I've already done it twice now. I've opened one of the polishing bottles and it is sprayed shit all over me. I had to do a quick wardrobe change because it looked like Johnny Sins it all over my left leg and torso. So um, I'm in a new set of clothes now and I'm going to keep doing what I was doing and hopefully it doesn't happen again because that really sucked. Anyways, I've now got some metal polishing compound on there. So I'm going to pop this boy in there, spin it around again, and then that one should be good once I'm done with this. It might be hard to hear, but it doesn't make a grinding noise. And you should be able to hear it slightly more with this one. Anyways, I'm just gonna repeat that process for all of these on both sides, and then I will get back to you because this is gonna take a while and I am not going to film all of it. Here's an even better sound comparison. Here's one that I've finished already. Let's see how light the scratching noise is. 
we move it over to the next valve hole, that's how bad it is. So that noise is the difference between one that's been lapped and one that hasn't. Okay, so all of the exhaust valves are lapped. They are good. We'll go ahead and move on to the intake valves. So I wanted to take a quick video of this before I move on, actually. I used this, and I took the smaller suction cup off the bottom of that. And what I'll do is I'll put compound on the valve and then the head, and then I'll use the drill and I'll spin it for about 30 to 60 seconds, depending on how rough it feels. And then I'll go ahead and finish it off by hand. That way, it cuts a little quicker but I can still get a accurate feeling in my fingers to know when it's done all right so these are 100% done now I'm taking the small one and what I'm doing is I'm spinning it dry to see if I can hear anything I've checked all of them now none of them make any noise so I know they're all good to go all the valves are good um, unfortunately I do have to take a break because I got to go to work but as soon as I get back I'll be able to clean all these uh, valves off I'll be able to put the valve stem seals in all that good stuff put the head together and it should be ready to go all right, so I'm back in the garage with the 2JZ. It's now 17 degrees outside instead of the earlier, like 63 or whatever it was. So that's great. That's going to be fun to work with. It's a little warmer in here than it is outside, but not by much. So I'll probably start getting pretty cold. You might hear me sniffle a lot here and then. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to put in my Power Division uh, Viton stem seals today. I've never done this before, so I'm going to try to learn as I go. I think the best method to do this would be to probably put something on top of these, like a socket to press it in the same way. I did with the front and rear main seals when I was installing those. I'm going to take off the valve covers up here and go ahead and try and get started. So these are blue, which the old ones were kind of like a brown black color. I don't know if that's just the difference in material or if they just dye it to make it look fancy, but these are the new ones. I'll grab the old one real quick and I'll show you what they look like in comparison. So here both of them are together. This is the old one. It's that kind of dark brown color. This is the new one. You can see that the size that clips onto the valve valve stem seat is exactly the same, but I did notice something about this. Look how much tinier the hole is on the Viton seal. I actually don't know if it's pronounced Viton. I just sound, say it like that because it sounds cool. Sounds like some shit from Marvel. But anyways, uh, the Viton seal is a lot smaller in diameter on the center, so this is going to grip the valve much, much better. This one is either just larger by default or it's just completely worn out, so it's a good thing I decided to change these regardless because these are going to seal better since they have a smaller gap and and uh, that's really what I'm looking for. It's going to prevent oil from getting into the combustion chamber. And ultimately, I shouldn't even have to think about replacing these ever again, even if I do a head rebuild, simply because it's a stronger material and it's going to seal a little bit tighter. And actually before I do this, I still haven't cleaned off the head from when I lapped everything yesterday. It's just sitting up here. So I'm gonna take that off, spray it with some brake clean, get all that stuff out of there. And then I'll put the seals on because I don't wanna have any stupid reason for them to not seal properly say the brake clean melts part of the Viton. Like I don't wanna take that risk. So I'm gonna clean this first, then go ahead and put them in. Dirty, big dirty. All right, so I'm also just gonna take the time to clean off all the cylinders here because I haven't cleaned the top of them since I assembled the short block. So there's gonna be assembly lube all over the top of them. There might be some dust that's accumulated. And this is probably the last time that I'm gonna be taking the engine head on and off. So I'm gonna clean everything up, put my head gasket back on, and then I'm going to just leave it there. As soon as it's assembled, then it's getting fucking sent, so. That noise was inhuman and I apologize. However, it is appropriate that I must make it every fucking time I squeeze myself into a tight space. Take that as you will. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to put these in now that the head is clean. I'm gonna try to develop a method to get these in safely. I don't wanna put a bunch of pressure right on that top of the rubber there because it might, you know, distort it or break it. So I've grabbed this to see if I could just pop it around there so I could push down on that. And also I found this thing. I have no idea what this even is. It's probably a sensor of some sort, but that actually goes inside of there and then it'll push down a little bit on the rubber and then I can just use like a sock 
pocket and barely tap it in there or just push it down if I need to. So I'm gonna get this one in and see what it takes to do it and then I will show you how I got it in. All right, so I got the first two valve stems and seals in. So the way I was doing it the first time was pretty terrible. I was trying to tap it down in there. I figured out that if I put the valve in there and use that as a guide, it goes on way easier. And then I can see if this is actually sitting on there perpendicular to the valve. So when I put it on without the valve in there, it was sitting on there crooked. I don't want that because that's a one way ticket to an improper seal. So what I did is I slipped the valve in there, slipped the bushing on, and then pushed it down with a socket by hand, not with the hammer. It seemed to work a lot easier. It's just a little bit more elbow grease that way, but it's probably safer and it'll help that valve stem seal. Also, additionally, I, when I was using the hammer, I smashed the spring on this one. So I had to grab a spring from one of the old valve stem seals and then wrap it around there, which it's a pain to get those on. So be very, very careful if you're using any kind of force that you don't damage those springs. I was just lucky that I had one to replace the new one with. But yeah, both of these are in. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of them. I've got the valve stem for number three right here. So what I was doing was I was taking the valve stem seal, setting it down, putting some oil on the inside of it to lubricate it as it goes down, take an Allen key, have the seal sit like that then I would take this tool and I would put it around the rubber make sure I'm not hitting that spring gently push it down and then once it's all the way towards the bottom give it another good push to make sure it's in place and that boy is in there now I'm gonna do the rest of them all the valves are in on this you can see all the seals are in on this side so now I just got to do the intake as this is the exhaust all complete so when I was doing the exhaust, I did it one at a time. I decided I'm gonna be more efficient with the intake valves. I'm gonna do a little trick here. Watch this. <clears throat> I'm gonna do that again real quick, hold on. Now the valves won't come out when I tip this over. I hope that looks simple enough because it is pretty simple, but they're uh, all in on the intake side and the exhaust side now. Now that all the valve stem seals are in, I can put in the spring seats in the bottom of all these. I'm gonna clean those up with some brake clean first, and then just go ahead and throw them all in. I'm gonna clean up the springs here. Once they're clean, I can go ahead and just set them down in the head. All right, so I've got all the springs set in there. Now I just need to clean off the spring retainers, the keepers, and then I need to uh, compress the springs so I can fit the keepers around the end of the valve. All right, so all the spring retainers are clean. Just went ahead and pop those in there. All I do is just sit down on top of the spring. So now all those are clean. I can go ahead and put the keepers in and I will show you the process of how I do that. All right, so I gotta move this over the edge. Yes, this is very anxiety inducing because this is expensive, but what I have to do is put pressure on the top of the spring here and then hold the valve in place on the bottom. So I just have to slide the edge of the cylinder head over that way I can get something on the bottom and I will show you what I'm going to use in just a sec. So this right here is just a clamp. It's just a thread in and then I've got this socket. It's for removing sensors. So what you'll do is you'll slide this on. It'll connect to the nut and then I think you'll be able to reach the wiring through here. What I've figured out is that if I set this down there like this, I can put the keepers in place through the hole where it attaches to the socket or to the drive, I should say. But yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and do them all on this side real quick and then I'll move on to the intake side. All right, so I'm starting on the bottom here. This is where the clamp is pushing against the bottom of the valve. So I just put the flat part of the clamp on the bottom of the valve there. And up here on top, I've got the clamp holding on to the sensor socket. If you look down in there, you can see the head of the valve. So I got to do is pop the keepers around that and then I can decompress the clamp and then the valve stem spring and retainer will all be in place okay I've got the exposure turned way up so sorry about your eyes getting blinded by everything around the edges I just want you to be able to see in the center of the socket uh, where the actual valve is right there so I'm gonna put the keepers down in there 
and it's kind of difficult to get these to go in the right way every time. So I've been using a screwdriver with a magnet attached to it. And then occasionally I'll use a chopstick to help me slide it down into place. It doesn't always work, but it's been sort of helpful. It's more time consuming this way. The best thing to do would be to buy a tool that's designed to put keepers in. Bingo. I had to move the camera out of the way that way I could actually get my arms down in here to get that second keeper in. That one's all good. I'll just go ahead and do the same thing for all the rest and then I will get back to you guys when I'm finished. So I just wanted to make a quick video about the fact that I've been having trouble getting the keepers to slide down into that gap in the bottom of this. So I took an old socket that I have extras of and I just cut the sides around it. And this makes it a lot easier because for this thing, I would have to use like screwdrivers, like a, a chopstick to try and get the keepers down in there, but they would keep hitting on the edges. So with this larger hole in the bottom and more space, I can literally just set them down in there with my fingers so much easier and literally still didn't cost me a thing to do this okay so an eon later we've got all the uh, valves springs retainers keepers all that good stuff in here it took a while just because i had trouble getting the keepers to fall into the spot as it was compressed that's a skill issue so uh it's my fault it took forever but they're all finally in all right now that that's together i wanted to show you guys something else that came in recently and it's this so i told you guys in the last video that i ordered a clear cover for this and it's finally here um, i ordered this from titan motorsports ebay page it's an auto tech interiors plastic i think lexon or lexan cover is what the plastic's called i figured i would get this and then the uh, metal super one which is underneath it just to see what would be easier to work with and i'm thinking what i'm gonna do is since there's a vvti gear that sticks out right here i'm gonna have to notch this or order the ge vvti cover and then cut it right around here but we'll have to see i'm also still debating on colors i actually think it looks kind of cool with the super logo underneath the clear but i'm thinking i might paint this these and then the front cover all the same keep a little bit of a consistency all across the top of the motor i really like the look of this with these little side vents here i think it looks pretty good but yeah we'll see what's going on with that a little later uh, i still have to wait for that other piece to, to come in for the ge vvti cam cover thing still got a mock-up how I'm exactly gonna fill this and I'll probably do that with cardboard or something and then just mold it into this top piece here. But from far away, she's definitely a looker, man. I'm like, it's not even completely assembled yet, but it looks really good, really, really good. Now, speaking of assembly, I won't be able to put the camshafts in for a little bit. I do have head studs on the way, so they're going to be here probably tomorrow. Um, I don't know when this video is going to come out. I'd like to say sorry. I thought I was going to release this a couple of days ago. Um, the last video, I think I released either Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, I was expecting to get this done Thursday or Friday, but it is now Sunday. That's simply just because of time delays and weather. Um, I finally got everything in the head assembled, but now I got to wait on a couple other parts to actually get the head bolted down. So um, once those those head studs arrive i can torque this head to the block it will be permanently fixed to the block finally i still gotta put the camshafts in check the shims so head studs first camshafts check the tolerances the camshafts versus the shims and if that's all good then i can go ahead and move on then i'll finally be able to just cover the top of this thing i'll be able to put the uh the cam timing gears on i'll be able to put all the plastic and the uh, tensioners and the timing belt all that stuff on in the front and finally move to the intake and exhaust sides of the motor uh, there's there's a lot of things that need to go in there so i'll be making a separate part for both of those different things but yeah with that being said it should be or at least the head should be buttoned up completely i don't know how much longer it's going to take to get all the intake and exhaust stuff sorted quite yet but we'll see when it comes comes to the time for those things so and now that it's starting to get warm outside, I can take the time to uh, clean all this garbage off where I pressed up against the silicone sealer, clean all that up finally. Well, that's a wrap for this one, boys and girls. So if you enjoyed, hit the like button, subscribe. Let me know your opinions about the uh, coil covers up there on top. I want to know what you think about colors and design, if any opinions at all. But uh, yeah, that's everything for this video. Go out there and make the rest of your day a great day. Peace out. I'll see you guys in the next one.